Hi, I'm Tim Singleton. I'm going to be reading A Place to Call Home, The Landscapes of Catherine Sulan Nan. As I write this, the world is in the midst of a pandemic. The world, our world, all of us, humanity. Together, we have holed up wherever we are, waiting out the spread of a virus. Wherever we happen to be is where we're going to be for a while. While we are settled in and trying to figure things out, trying to understand what has happened and what is going to happen next, we are unsettled. What made sense a month ago, the way we understood things to be, the way we live, has changed. It is anxiety making. It's the kind of moment I would love to be standing in front of a work of art by Catherine Sulan Mann, finding comfort in the energy, color, shape, movement, and texture of her abstractions. There's a place for me there. Maybe one of her larger public murals stretching around a room, a collage of ink and paint and printed elements on shapes of paper moving into and out of each other to form a morphous whole. Or maybe in front of an individual work on a large rectangle of paper in a gallery exhibiting a collection of her works so I could turn and see more, each control and chaos, beauty made through spilling, splashing, patterning, marking, drawing, painting, each something of a new world to dwell with. They would be anxiety-mending places, somewhere to be for a while, reassuring and grounding. As an artist, man works to, with paint, ink, printing, collage, and other techniques to create images that are a mixture of accident and will. She often works on paper. She is gaining a reputation for large-scale murals and other public space artwork, like Breaker, as well as gallery-specific installations like Scaffold. These works start with paper, but often move on to support material like walls, columns, floors, and ceilings. They grow into their environment. The work on paper, like Waterall, would likely start on the floor with Catherine splashing or pouring ink and letting it dry, a haphazard arrangement for the foundation of an image. Her experience as a semi-e painter guides the effort. Where there is some oversight in its action, some awareness of how liquid behaves and color absorbs, each work starts without any real artistic control. A few days in, when the piece is dried, a more controlled hand takes over, filling out space with solid areas of color, lace works of often botanical drawing, maybe more spilling or dripping, area painting or individual brush marks. Shapes may be cut out of the image, printed tissue may be fastened over areas, paper might be layered. The work may span a single piece of large paper or be constructed be a constructed arrangement of a number of sheets. It is almost as if the energy of the drawing and painting decides the process of making. The last time I saw Catherine, we bumped elbows as we parted company, hearing it was safer than handshakes or hugs. We were becoming increasingly aware of something happening in the world around us, the invisible presence of a pandemic moving into conversation and practice. She had just finished a piece called The Bear in the lobby of the Juniper apartment building in downtown Columbia, Maryland, a commission by the Howard Hughes Corporation. A week prior, while she was getting started on the piece, we had greeted each other with a hug and looked forward to talking about her art as she worked on the mural. It seems a luxury now, a casual conversation in the to and fro of a public place, strangers stopping by to look, ask questions, and linger a while. Now, a month later, people wait out the crisis in their own spaces. The bear exists in an unwanted hibernation, ready for its debut, mostly unseen by anyone. What awaits is visible when walking through the building's main lobby. At the back of the main room is a glass wall. The straight lines and neutral colors of the lobby give way to arabesques of colorful energy on the other side of the glass. Step through a doorway, and you're confronted with the width, by the width of a work that runs the length of a short hallway, moving from floor to ceiling twice, even incorporating two support pillars that stand out from the wall. You're intimately close, surrounded. It's almost hard to take in the whole of the piece at once, something man might appreciate, saying she prefers to start with the detail of the mural first, then move through it piece by piece, building an understanding out from that specific initial interest to a self-guided experience. The image is a mixture of studio-made paper elements collaged into place with some floral prints, with some solid coloring, and then there are places where paint is applied to the wall, adding movement and connectivity. There are lots of shapes in it to take in. It's organic and almost aquatic. The work seems sculptural when you consider the textures and the interwoven elements of paper, the smoothness of paint, the jut of brads appearing under a coat of glaze. The brads hold the paper to the wall. The glaze is a finishing coat over the whole of the work. You want to add touch to the experience of looking. It's bewitching. Because of the space of the hall and the presence of the supports, you have to move around to contemplate the elements, the view. This animates the piece beyond the movement inherent in its design. It's fantastical world, charming and full of energy, a place to lose oneself, or rather, to lose the outside world. I first met Catherine Mann when she was one of the three Meriwether District artists in residence in Columbia last year. MD Air, another investment in creativity and art for the sake of community and placemaking by the Howard Hughes Corporation, is a month-long residency program that has artists living and creating in downtown Columbia. 
Over the course of the month, the artists develop new work and hold workshops with the public. At the end of the period, there's a week-long exhibition of their work called Airborne. In 2019, Mann was selected, along with sculptor Sarah Stefana Smith, an illustrator and documentary filmmaker Ram Devanini, to participate in the residency. Studio space was the vast fifth floor of the two Merriweather building. The artists divided the unfinished office space in thirds and quickly got to work. Initially, Mann started working with paper pieces, filling up the floor-to-ceiling canvas of a central wall. But then the windows caught her eye. She asked if she could use the windows as a canvas and was granted permission. The windows provided an opportunity for her to create a work where light showed through a piece rather than being reflected off of it. Painting directly on film, using colored tissue and other transparent and translucent paper elements, Mann began moving from window panel to window panel along one end of the building, creating work backlit by the morning sun. Reminiscent of stained glass windows and cathedrals, the piece seemed a monument to light and the joy that light, color, and shape can create. Stepping toward it, you see details, like the movement of a ribbon drawn into place, or how shapes carry the viewer from one panel to the next. The work dominated the unfinished space, taking charge of natural light and giving it an extra presence. At certain periods of the day, the sunlight projects colors and shapes through the room and onto the floor. Man's works instantly elicit words like dazzling, fantastic, electric, gorgeous, and wonderful. You stand back in awe for a moment and take in what seems to be ensembles. Eyes rove up and down, over and through. Because the pieces are abstract, there is no instant narration that takes over the mind. You look on wordlessly at first. You must look inward. Subjectively, the words you provide are your own. They force a meditation. I find works to be place-making. As landscapes, they are a place, home to the viewer for a while. One of the words I had in mind when I set out to write this piece is nomadic, partly because of the life Catherine has led. She was born the daughter of a diplomat and moved every few years, so home was less a single location than a series of places around the world. For a while, she said, the longest she had lived anywhere was college. These days, she is a DC-based artist who lives with her husband and two children. Half Taiwanese, she has a biracial sense of not belonging anywhere in particular. She has been interested in art from an early age and remembers making imaginary landscapes, places to get lost in. Today, she is not a landscape artist in the sense of building vistas, broad views of actual places that have physical presence and demand a certain kind of attention. Hers are more fantastical places. While they provide escape, she has also come to see them as self-portraits, places where different elements of making confront each other, like the dash of a spilled paint, like the dash of spill paint versus the craft of a brush stroke. While the outcome can be chaotic, it's also a celebration of disparate elements. Mann graduated magna cum laude from Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island in 2004 with degrees in visual art and education. In 2009, she received her MFA from the Maryland Institute College of Arts Hofberger School of Painting. It was at the Maryland Institute where she was stung by a critique that changed her artistic approach. The abstract expressionist Grace Hardigan commented that she was a draftsman and not a painter. The snipe helped Mann change the way she worked, allowing the randomness of things, like spilling, and pouring to initiate the process of making a work of art. There are landmark moments in an artist's life. Certainly for men, one was the Hardigan criticism, which fundamentally changed her approach. Another was a trip to the Magao Caves in Dunhuang, China, a system of Buddhist temples along a silk road. The caves are saturated with art, with figurative references and decorative symbolic elements filling the walls and ceilings of hundreds of spaces. Each mark an element of prayer crafted by an artist, each a visual prayer for the faithful to contemplate. The repetitive process of pattern making as prayer, filling space to the brim with that kind of presence, an effort took hold. In Dong Huang 3 and Dong Huang 6, you can see examples of her work evolving into this effort to move beyond filling a containing shape like a rectangle of a piece of paper into a kind of ecstatic effort to overwhelm that space. Containing shape is filled to frenzy and almost bursting. A third such landmark moment was motherhood. Aside from the obvious schedule and practice demolishing work it takes to raise children, your meaning, purpose, and perspectives change with motherhood. A new balance must come into play between studio effort and family time, between your creative individual self and the responsibilities and complexities of loving, raising, and being responsible for little humans. The artist as mother has become one of the charges Catherine takes on in what is typically a discipline that can be less than family friendly. She looks for residencies and other opportunities that welcome the family dynamic and presence in the studio. Her children often pop, in, pop up in candid photographs on her Instagram page in the midst of her work and even helping with the mark making. Wonderful. 
Catherine Mann's reputation as an artist is growing. She's the recipient of numerous grants, fellowships, and residencies. Her work has been shown around the world, including the Walters Art Museum, the Corcoran Art Gallery, Gallery of Art, Rawls Museum, and the U.S. Consulate in Dubai. In the months prior to the pandemic quarantine, her work was showing in Pittsburgh, San Francisco, New York, and Washington, D.C. In addition to the Howard Hughes Commission, she has also created work for Facebook's D.C. headquarters, Pod Hotel in D.C., and the MGM Hotel in National Harbor, and a number of other locations. Work was scheduled to begin on a new commission in April. Although, no, although it's no substitute for being in the actual presence of one of her pieces, you can find more of Catherine's work on her website at katherinemann.net and on her Instagram page at Katie Zuan. I think of Mann's work, Small Planet. There's a flow to it, end to end and back. To me, it has a sense of all of us as one, humanity. With this pandemic, we have learned just how small this planet is, how interconnected we all are, this place, our home, our landscape. As we read out the pandemic in our isolations, unsettled, it is a comfort to look on these images and consider how we can all find a place in such work.